Hello friends, welcome to my channel about creating and using hand spun yarn. My name is Lisa and I can be found on social media as the Soulful Spinner. Uh, we have a Ravelry group called Soulful Spinning. If you'd like to go over there, pop in and introduce yourself. We'd love to see you over there. We're over to 50 plus members right now, so Ravelry provides that nice little um, small space for us to connect and share our love of fleece and fiber. So you can go ahead and post pictures and tell us what you're working on. So today is the 22nd of May, 2020, and it is the start of Memorial Day weekend here. So Memorial Day weekend is, as you know, the unofficial start of summer. I am a school teacher, so Memorial Day is always a welcome uh, weekend because then I know that I'm going to have some time to enjoy the, all my crafty things on a more or less full-time basis. So I hope this summer gives you some opportunities to um, engage in the kind of crafts you like to do. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk about some spinning, a little bit of knitting. The breed of the week is Jacob. Jacob sheeps are one of my favorite, favorite breeds. So I've got quite a lot to say about Jacobs and some really beautiful classic examples of Jacob. I've got a little acquisition. Uh, I've got a new spindle from one of my favorite spindle makers and uh, some fiber from a favorite mill in South Dakota. So let's get started. We're going to start um, talking about spinning first. So I had a happy mail day this week. I received a box from Kelly over at Dakota Carding and Wool. And Kelly is a small mill who takes, she'll, she'll do um, individual fleeces, um, she'll take fleeces from farms and produce roving and fiber bats. Uh, she's, she's just lovely. She's got a wonderful uh, Instagram feed where I follow her. And that's how I got myself into trouble because she had posted that she had some Jacob fleeces that uh, she, had, she had acquired and so she processed them and she was offering them for sale and I think she was offering them from like, for like $30 a pound for washed fleece. I could not resist you know uh, ordering some so I did. So I'll insert a little video here of my unboxing of my package from Kelly and we'll talk to you in just a minute. So I bought a package from Dakota Carding and Wool today from the good Kelly over there. And this is her note, greetings from the yarn farm. So I follow Kelly on Instagram and I ordered this ginger honey colorway. I'll open it up here and show it to you. It's a blend of South Dakota produced wool and mohair. Eco-friendly and I can already smell the um, essential oils she uses in her processing. It's very, very wonderful. So I'll open that in a minute. And then the other thing I bought was some Jacob wool. And she had got some fleeces from a, a neighboring farm and she, uh, she washed and carted these up. So I'm going to open this up too and show you what it looks like. So this is the Jacob wool I have. Now this is five ounces here, and it's beautiful cl clouds of fiber that she pulls off her massive drum carter. She's got a commercial drum carter. She processes fleeces for people and for shepherds. So beautiful shades of white and gray. So this one's five ounces. It's a lot of wool. And then this one is 13 ounces. I ordered a pound. She threw in a little bit extra, I see. And it is so... See how she basically comes off the cards. Her big carter. Oh boy, is that pretty and clean. It smells lovely. Oh, it really smells so good. I don't know what she uses. But I've received um, fiber from her before and it's the same. So I'm going to have a lot of fun. Sometimes I just like having the fiber already processed by someone else. And supporting a small producer like Kelly over at Dakota Carding and Wool just feels good too. 
highly recommend her shop. She's at all the fiber festivals too. She has some beautiful things in her shop. So, um, you know, if you feel like you want to support a local, um, you know, fiber producer, uh, check out her shop. Yeah, so this is Biota Yarns, features local healthy fleece, pasture raised on small farms, processed by local fiber business dedicated to making quality yarns for fiber artists. Here's her card, Dakota card in the mole. I think she has BFLs. And so what I'm going to do is I have basically three shades here. I've got this white, kind of very, very light gray, really. <clears throat> then there's the more medium shade of gray here. And then there's the darkest. Yeah, so, oops, there's my camera card. Let me see if I can get a better color, uh, picture over here. Yeah, that's the color right there. It's this dark, oh, so fluffy. So this right here, in this, this is 13 ounces. So you can see how much air and fluff is in this bag. And she also, when she ships it, she ships it in a box so she doesn't compress it. So it's not all, you know, the life's not, you know, squished out of it when it's shipped. So this is the other thing I bought from uh, Kelly over at Dakota Carding and Wool. This is BFL Border Luster and Cormel. And this is called Ginger Honey. A blend of South Dakota produced wool and mohair. Ginger Honey. Yeah, yeah it's this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful stunning shades of orange and red and brown and some greens. It's so pretty. Yes. Highly recommend her products. You can see it's not roving. It's basically big sheets of bat that very gently carded. So it's all the colors are just a little bit separated. Oh, it's so beautiful. Kelly did a beautiful job with this. It's gorgeous. So this is it. <laughs> this is it. It's so soft and squishy. As I mentioned in that video, Kelly uses some sort of essential oils. Like I think I asked her what she uses. She uses lavender, rosemary, and vetiver as a moth repellent. And so anytime you get uh, fiber from her and you open the box, it's just like this wonderful scent comes at you. It's not strong at all. It's just this beautiful, fresh, clean scent. It just yeah, you could very easily get addicted to her, her fibers just because of that. But this is what it looks like. I think you got a good idea in the little video here. So I put all this together in this big bag. And you can see that there are these big, fluffy clouds of fiber. She minimally processes the wool. She sends it through the carter, opens up all the locks. Uh, gets rid of all the veg matter and provides you with this beautiful spinning preparation. So what's wonderful about this kind of prep is that it's it's so open and fluffy so if whether you want to spin it worsted style or woolen style you're set. You don't have to do any preparation at all.
So I've been spinning this up on my Lendrum folding wheel in a, in a long draw method. And I'm working on my unsupported long draw. So what I'm trying to do is, is draw the fiber back, but not use this hand to control the twist and to draft against my hand. I'm trying to um, sort of draft against just the orifice. I think that would work really well with a, a quill, which is like a point you put on your, on your wheel. But then I always sort of resort back to that uh, supported long draw where you're, you're, you're putting some pressure here so you can um, pull back. So I've spun up one, uh, one skein so far. I took the lightest shades in the, in the, um, in the bag that look like white and super light gray. And I did two bobbins. I can see I still got some darker fibers in there. And I ran out of a bobbin when I was plying. So I have this little mini skein here. Now this, I already, I had this great idea from, uh, from Terry um, on Instagram. She says, why don't you uh, make a little sample skein with the leftovers that wouldn't fit on the bobbin? And that's exactly what I did. So thank you, Terry, for that suggestion. <laughs> and uh, what I did is I did the typical woolen um, finishing. I washed it in hot water, then I put it in cold water, then I put it in hot water. And when I took it out, I did the thwacking. So, you know, when you thwack, you you hit it against a hard surface, and so it makes it super fluffy. So my goal for this yarn is a two-ply jumper weight, sort of all along the lines of Jameson's of Shetland. So a nice two-ply jumper weight yarn. And I want to make, I think, a hap, a hap shawl maybe with the different colors. So I'm gonna swatch this one and see what my gauge is and see how my spinning, you know, how the plying went before I spin a, a whole lot of this. But I have started another bobbin. This one is, this one was actually the medium shades of gray from the fleece, which looks a lot darker after it got uh, spun up. So what I'm going to do is separate the colors, more or less. I'm not going to be really precise about it, but I'm taking the whole bag of fiber and splitting it up into light, really light gray, white fleece, and then the medium gray, and then the black. So you have some of the colors in this fleece are quite dark. You can see that it's quite dark. So I'm, I'm hoping that I get three shades and then whatever is left over that kind of doesn't fit into those categories, I'm just going to spin up as sort of a marl and make those uh, transition skeins in the project. So that's my plan. So receiving this Jacob and working with it reminded me how much I love the breed. And so I thought the breed of the week today would be Jacob I've got some wonderful examples in my stash of the classic black and white Jacob, and then I also have a lilac uh, fleece that is sort of a, I don't think they completely understand the genetics of the, 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 the lilac, um, you know, character, uh, the lilac type of Jacob, but I have an, a, a lilac Jacob that I'm going to show you. So what I think I'm going to do is insert that video here. I took out my fleece. I have two raw fleeces. And I have one fleece that I already washed and spun up into some skeins of yarn. So I'm going to insert that video here of my fleeces, and I hope you enjoy it. So I was going through my stash. And I found these two little Jacob fleeces I bought last year. I connected with somebody on Etsy. I cannot find his shop anymore, though. I don't know if he's still up there or not, but I'll look. This is Ramona. And Ramona is what uh, they call a lilac or lilac uh, Jacob fleece. And the other one is Mandy. And she's your typical uh, black and white. So I'm going to open these up so you can get a better look at the lock structure. 
So I'm going to open up the lilac one first. Now I washed a bit of this one uh, last year, and I'll show you some clean locks um, in a little bit. But you can see how tiny it is. I just, I think I pulled just a little tiny few ounces off to wash it. So this is the lilac color of Jacob. So it's a brown, it's a, it's a brownish gray. It's really pretty. This particular fleece is on the short side. Um, I think it's only about two and a half two and a half inches and and last year I was trying to comb it with my mini combs and I was getting really frustrated so what I think I'm going to do this time is is card it up it is very low in grease um, so you're not going to have a lot of loss after you scour and I'll get you in a little bit closer so you can see all the various colors here are some of the locks that I pulled out from Ramona and you can see the pointy tips as described in the fleece and fiber source book This may have been a lamb fleece. It's extremely soft and fine. It's got a well-defined crimp structure This one really shows the crimp quite well in the pointed tips And then here's the lighter color. I think this is gonna wash up to a creamy white and the whole fleece uh, are those colors you've got these beautiful browns and then I'm almost going into a gray very very lovely very clean I don't believe they can coat Jacobs just because of their nature with the horns and everything um, so they I don't think they normally coat Jacob fleeces so this one was particularly clean, uh, or it was extremely well skirted. Here's some more of those beautiful lilac uh, locks here. Okay, I'm going to put this one away, and I'll show you the more typical black and white Jacob. This is the other Jacob that I have. This is her name was Mandy, and this is a typical black and white uh, piebald spotted Jacob. I'm afraid I've got it all kind of messed up. I can't lay it out in the shape that it was skirted. I... If you want to see somebody lay out a fleece and in, in the shape that it came off the animal, check out Sarah over at Crafting with Compassion. She did a fleece uh, episode. It was really interesting. She laid it out beautifully and talked about sorting and so on. So I highly recommend you to go check her out. So this one's kind of messed up, kind of jumbled. It's quite a bit dirtier. Um, you could see a lot of veg. It may just be because it's the black is showing up the little um, particles of of hay and so on. So, but you could see this is all this this is definitely the neck though. So after you work with fleeces for a while, you can start to identify the parts even if it's not laid out. I can tell this is by the neck because it's super super crimpy. So this was around her little head here. Yeah. Again, this is very low in grease. And I'm going to pull out a couple of locks here and show you what this one looks like close up. So I went ahead and pulled out a few of the locks from Andy's fleece. Here's some of the white locks. You can see the beautiful crimp structure here. I've read that sometimes it can have a disorganized crimp kind of like the down wools, but this one has a very defined crimp. Here's another piece. It's very soft, very fluffy, and very low in grease. This has been sitting in a bucket, a five-gallon bucket, for a year. It's not tacky at all. Here's your typical brown-black with the pretty brown tips. And there's a fair amount of veg in here, but it could be you know, she wasn't coated, and uh, that will come out in the processing. Uh, here's a lock I found that's got more of the grays, gray colors. Like a variegated. So, I mean, the sky's the limit with these, with these, this particular breed. Here's another lock 
that's got more of the gray browns. And then I thought, this is so cute. This is the neck wool. Cute little lamby. Very short. So hand carding or drum carding, I think, is the um, method of choice for this one. Yeah, so I think this is more of your typical, more common Jacobs. The, the black and then the white. And then the grays, of course, if you mix these two together, you're going to get a beautiful gray. All right, I have one more example of a Jacob fleece in my stash. It was from a local breeder, and I've actually processed that one. It's all clean, and it gives you some other uh, characteristics of the breed. So I'll show you that next. So this is how I store some of my fleece. This is a five-gallon bucket you pick up at, you know, the hardware store. And I've stored raw fleeces in here and tamped them down real tight. I learned that technique from Judith McKenzie's DVD, Three Bags Full, where she talks all about buying a fleece. And she says when they bale the fleeces for commercial processing, they put them in tight bundles and that actually prevents moths and critters from getting inside. So that's what I have. I have several of these bu uh, buckets. I can never have too many. And what I do is I just uh, put a piece of tape on the outside and then a sample of the fleece, Three Fates Farm, and it's, it's clean. So I'll take this out and let you see what it looks like. Here is that fleece. It's from Three Fates Farm. It's a, um, she's a shepherd in Crete, Illinois. Uh, I connected with a girl one, one afternoon and we went over to this lady's house and she had a Jacob fleeces for sale. And she had them in her kitchen and we sat on the floor laid them out and i just picked one uh, i'm kind of wishing i got more than one at the time but uh, i was pretty new to uh, fleece processing this is a great first fleece uh, if you're interested in, in starting your journey because again they're smaller they're easy to wash easy to process low grease uh, super easy to spin i just can't say enough good things about jacobs this was mostly white, and then the black spots, you know, are the mi minority on the sheep. And I processed most of the blacks and the grays into some bulky skeins, which I'll show you. But, uh, yeah, it's been perfectly fine stored in that bucket. And this one's, the characteristics quite a bit different than the fleeces that I showed you just before. I'll show you the difference here. Well, first of all, you'll notice the lock structure is much more wavy and much longer and very open and fluffy. Um, you can't really see the crimp structure very well when you look at it close up. Here's another uh, lock that I think you can see the, the crimp a little bit better. So this one was mainly uh, this pure white and then this, again, this brown gray, which is so lovely. And then you had these lighter shades here. And what I did is I separated the whites from the darks. I carded them up on my drum carter and spun it uh, as a real thick single and came up with these bulky skeins, which I will show you. And But you'd see it's very, very fluffy, very open. So and they're pretty grays. So just to compare... Here's your, and the, here's the lock here. Look at this lock here. This one has hardly no any crimp at all. It's more like, almost like a Coopworth or a long wool. This could have been by the bridge area. Again, I don't, I'm not always good about laying things out and figuring out what part of the body the fleeces came from. So there's your lilac. It is definitely a caramely soft brown. This is the, the gray and the white from the more classic, I, I consider that more classic Jacobs. I think the lilacs are much rarer. I think this was, and I think this was a lamb and that's why you have a lot more crimp and softness on this one. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the tour of my Jacob fleeces and we'll talk a little bit more about the breed um, in just a few minutes. Yep. I got some information from the Livestock Conservancy website. 
the American Jacob is a heritage, it's a conservation breed. So I think it's part of the Shave Em to Save Em uh, group as well, though I, I have that booklet and a little pin, but I've been kind of informally doing my own breed study with some of those breeds. So I'm not doing the stickers or anything like that. But uh, I'm going to read a little bit about the Jacob sheep from the Livestock Conservancy. And I'll show you some images of Jacobs that I was able to get from a Flickr online through a Creative Commons license. So they're, uh, it's okay for me to show those pictures here. So sheep with spots have been described in many cultures throughout history, appearing in works of art from the Far East, Middle East, and Mediterranean regions. Among these accounts is the biblical story of Jacob, who bred spotted sheep and for whom this breed is named. That's cool. Spotted sheep were documented in England by the 1600s and were widespread by the mid-1700s. They became popular in England as ornamental or park sheep. So if you ever watch a Jane Austen adaptation, a lot of times you'll see Jacob's sheep out, you know, on the manor. I could talk... I could do a whole podcast on Jane Austen, but we'll save that for another day. <laughs> uh, what else do they say? Uh, Jacob were ideal for this role as ornamental sheep, as they were picturesque but required minimal care. Scan selection occurred for anything but hardiness, spots, and four horns. So Jacob can have two, four, even I, I read six horns, I think. They, they're called polycerate, which they have multiple horns, and they're really impressive. They, they almost have a goat-like appearance. They're a primitive breed, and they look after themselves well. Jacobs are small, horned, black and white sheep. Ewes weigh between 80 and 120 pounds, and rams 120 to 180 pounds. The sheep are white with colored spots or patches. The colored portions of the fleece are usually black, but they can also be brownish or a lighter color called lilac. The Jacob, a multi-horned or polycerate breed, so it has two or four horns, those six horns also occur. And both sexes are horned, and the rams can have horns of impressive size and shape. The breed, I uh, guess it's between 25 and 35 microns for the fiber. I think that anything over 30 is sort of starts into the prickle factor range of fleeces. But, you know, each person is different in their tolerance of itchy wool. But... You know, really 30 micron is sort of the tipping point for when things are going to seem itchy to most people around their necks. So they're between 25 and 35 micron. So they're sort of in that medium range uh, for, for, fleece, for fleece type. The breed produces a medium fleece that is light and open with a staple length of 4 to 6 inches and a weight of 3 to 6 pounds. Now, as you saw in my little video, the two fleeces, Ramona and Mandy, had very short staples, so they were about three inches. Uh, in the fleece and fiber source book, um, they say that it's three to six, I think, is what for fleece staple length. Unlike most other medium wool breeds, quality of the fleece has been a major selection factor in the recent history of the Jacob breed. As a result, it is much sought after by fiber artisans who enjoy its characteristics and color combinations black, white, or a blend of the two. Jacob's sheep were first imported into North America beginning in the mid-1900s, and most of today's population descends from imports of the past 30 years. The breed has enjoyed widespread popularity among small flock holders, as well as hand spinners and weavers. North American breeders have selected primarily for fleece characteristics, and the confirmation of the sheep has remained very much like its historical description. The, the authors of Fleece and Fiber Source books say the same thing. They make a distinction between the, the, the British and the American Jacob. So they, in, in their book, they say that the British or the Great Britain uh, Jacobs are grown more commercially, industrial processed. They found that the roving had Kemp, it was crisp and tweedy. They tend to be larger sheep. Now, if anybody is watching this that lives there, maybe you could let us know, is that true? What, do you have an experience with Jacobs uh, where you live? Um, this is just the information that I have gleaned from the, my resources here. So it looks like 
in North America, they bred more for fleece quality. Variability is present, but this is characteristic of an unimproved primitive breed. So, uh, unimproved, I think that means they're, they haven't been changed considerably, their genetics have not been considerably changed from, from the past. During the same period of time, the British Jacob has been selected for greater commercial productivity, including larger size and more uniform appearance. In this way, the populations in Britain and North America have diverged. The American Livestock Breeds Conservancy has listed the North American population of Jacobs as a conservation priority. The distinctive appearance of the Jacob has sometimes worked in its favor, but at other times has proven an obstacle to the conservation of a pure breed. Spotted sheep of all shapes and sizes, included spotted Jacob, Dorset, and other crosses, have been sold as Jacobs to unsuspecting buyers. Identifying and recording the purebred Jacob population has been a continuing challenge for American breeders. So all that information was right from the Livestock Conservancy. If you want more information, again, about sheep breeds, everybody's been showing this book. It's been around for quite a while. Um, it's just an invaluable resource and really a must for any fiber artist library. I took that Lilac Jacob last summer and created, I, I used my mini combs and I created these little fluffs here. So this is the Lilac colorway for the Jacob. It's a, it's a soft gray brown. It's not gray, it's a, it's just this brownish, beautiful, soft color. And I'm, I started spinning this with my drop spindles, I think with my Turkish spindle last summer. And I wasn't too happy with the yarn that I was getting. It just seemed kind of, I don't know, dense and kind of lifeless. So I think what I'm going to do is spin this woolen so to get that real fluffy, um, you know, get a nice fluffy soft yarn. So I think that this one, Ramona was, I think she must have been a lamb's fleece because it's very, very soft. And I am um, spinning this on one of my support spindles. Um, this one is from Enid Ashcroft. I'll show you what it looks like here. You see it? Isn't it pretty? I am working on my support spindling and I have a video in the works. So next week I'm going to show you my support spindles um, and give a demonstration on how I spin supported. And also I will give you some resources for, for you if you're interested in support spindling. So that's upcoming for next week. So stay tuned uh, for the next episode where I will talk about my uh, support spindles. So, so this was the Lilac Jacob that I processed a little bit. Just took a little sample. And then this is from Mandy, the, the black one I showed you, the black and white I showed you. So yeah, this is just right off. I did the combs and I just pulled it off the combs without not doing it in roving. So, so let me show you the skeins that I spun up from the Three Fates Farm uh, fleece that I showed you. This was right after I um, received my Clemis drum carter 
or Clems. I'm not really sure how you say their name. I think it's Clemis and Clemis, but I, I, I may be wrong. So you can correct me on that if, if you know the proper pronunciation. But this is a bulky two-ply Jacob from Three Fates Farm in Crete, Illinois. And what I did is I had separated the white and then the darker shades. I got a very dark shade here. This is the dark, the darkest shade of that fleece. And then I made sh shades of various grays, a gradient. And I spun this on my little gem. I spun it short forward, uh, low twist singles. And you can see the different shades of the fleece. And that's what's so wonderful about Jacob. You just get all this myriad of colors. So if you're interested in doing a, a gradient project and you don't wanna mess with dyeing or buy a commercial top, you can buy a Jacob fleece and get all these wonderful colors. Of course, I haven't done anything with this yet. I really need to count up the yardage. I was thinking it'd be nice to put in a penguono. A lot of people are making that pattern by Stephen West. It's kind of a goofy looking jacket. And most of the ones that you see on Ravelry are kind of crazy wild colors. You can use art yarn and you know, be real creative. But there's a couple that are more in the natural shades. And I think Fran of Woolen Hearted is going to make a natural color penguono. So I thought maybe these skeins would be perfect in that particular project. Very easy to spin. Uh, just, I highly recommend this as a first time fleece. The other thing I got from Kelly was uh, four ounces of this ginger tea colorway. I'll show you my progress on that. I think I showed that to you in the little video clip just a moment ago. So this is the ginger tea colorway, quite quite a different color palette than what I'm wearing. Very autumnal, uh, beautiful shades of, of orange and rust and a little green, dark brown. Again, it's just so beautiful. I highly recommend her her shop. This is Cormo, Border Lester, and something else. Yeah, BFL, Border Lester, and Cormo. And it's called Ginger Honey. I think it was inspired by one of her favorite teas. So this is going to be a spindle project. I just think it's so beautiful. I want to enjoy every color, every moment of all the different shades. And so I'm spinning it on this spindle, which is a new spindle that I received from Jim Ector over at True Creations. This is a, a new wood to him. It's called Hubu Bali. And it's really, really pretty figuring there. And this is my progress so far on that. So he was saying that it was a new wood to him. And, um, you know, if you're interested in uh, True Creation spindles, I'll link a video that Jim made uh, a little while ago. I think on Facebook, in the Wool and Fiber Arts group, there was some sort of virtual Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I'm not really on, I don't really do Facebook. It's just too overwhelming to me. I just, I just can't do it. But um, he made this video where he showed off a bunch of spindles and was offering them for sale. And you get a really good idea of what the spindles look like, even more so than in the pictures on his website. So I'm just spinning this um, basically worsted style. So I'm spinning the spindle and then I'm drafting. I'm not smoothing it 100%, but I'm just not being too particular about it. And I have, an, I have a plan for this. Last week I talked about fin sheep I've been combing away at my fin fleece here. This was a black fin lamb that I purchased. 
and this is a spindle spun skein. And what I'm going to do is a shawl with this as the main body. And then I'm going to use this as the border. There's a beautiful pattern by Albina Hand, LB Handnits. It's called Crystal or Crystal. And uh, Caroline from uh, Herner Air made hers out of her own Nutidin yarn. And she made hers in, a, in this kind of rust color. And then she had a border that was a different color. And I thought I would do the inverse of that and do the, the main body in the brown and then this is the as the border. I just think that these two colors look really well together. Don't you? Yeah, I think so. So I went over there to buy the pattern and it's not in there anymore. She's got a I guess she's re-releasing it for New Tedon. And uh, but as soon as it's released, I'm gonna buy the pattern and swatch and I'm, I'm hoping that I can make this uh, into a project. I also spun up another little skein of my gray fin. I did this on my drop spindles and then I plied it on my wheel. And then I'm working on another one here. So I've got these. I'm going to make myself a little pair of mitts, I think, just to see how it knits up. So stay tuned for that. I have been doing a little swatching with some older hand spun, so of the fin. So I've just been doing a little sample just to see what the gauge looks like and how it knits up. So I'll more more on that later uh, when I get more more of that completed. So that's pretty much my spinning for the week. So knitting. I was over at the market yesterday, Whole Foods Market, and I was buying some things for the weekend, and I saw these flowers. These are uh, ranunculus, and there's a, uh, actually there's a very popular sweater pattern that people have knit uh, called ranunculus, and this is ranunculus, and these are, I think these are gypsophilia, which is also known as baby's breath, and um, it's really, it's very, very fragrant, it smells wonderful. And I just thought it was just such a pretty spring-like combination. So I made my own uh, collection. I just bought each of these separate, and I'm not very good at creating floral arrangements, but I just fell in love with this beautiful pink. So it got me thinking, I had this shawl in my, upstairs in my drawer that I had not finished. It, it all it needed was the ends woven in and a light block that's all it needed so this is um this is the impressionist shawl by helen stewart and it was a it was a knit along a couple summers ago i think 2018 and i made it out of a superwash merino And it's this beautiful, of course, Helen writes spectacular patterns. And it was three shades of yarn from White Whisker Studio on Etsy. I'll leave a link below. It's got a lace pattern here, some eyelets, and then a pico bind off. And this was a knit along. I, I don't usually do knit alongs just because I the pressure. I just feel pressured and I know I can never finish it in time. And I don't really care about prizes, but. I know I just feel like it becomes more of a chore when it's when there's a deadline. So when I was looking at these flowers this morning, I was remembering this this shawl, and I thought, well, isn't it perfect? It goes right. It goes with the the theme here. <laughs> So yeah, so that's a finished knitted knitted object. Um, like I said, all it needed was the ends woven in. That was it. <laughs> it, was, it was just sitting in there. I hadn't worn it in two years. It was just sitting there. So do you ever do that? Do you ever make a project and then not use it? I just felt like maybe it was too fancy or something. All right, I think that's it for me today, you guys. Um, thank you so much for your comments on my last video. 
and for your encouragement. It really means a lot to me. So I hope this finds you well, and I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a little bit more about Jacob Sheep. Have you spun Jacob? I'd love to hear your experiences with it in the comments below. As Again, you can contact me, I'm soulfulspinning at gmail.com, or you can private message me on Ravelry or Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a great weekend, and I hope you're staying well. I'll talk to you next week. Take care.